Margaret was born on the 28th of November 1489 at Westminster Palace, London. She died on the 18th of October 1541 at the age of 51 in Methven Castle, Scotland. Her first husband was James IV of Scotland. They were married in 1503 until his death in 1513. Her second husband was Archibald Douglas, 6th Earl of Angus. They were married in 1514 and divorced in 1527. Her third husband was Henry Stuart, 1st Lord Methven. They were married in 1528. Her children, James Stuart, Duke of Rothsay. He was born the 21st of February 1507 and died the 27th of February 1508. Arthur Stuart, Duke of Rothsay. He was born the 20th of October 1509 and died the 14th of July 1510. James V, King of Scotland, he was born the 10th of April 1512 and died the 14th of December 1542. Alexander Stuart, Duke of Ross, he was born the 30th of April 1514 and died the 18th of December 1515. Margaret Stuart, Countess of Lennox, she was born the 7th of October 1515 and died the 7th of March 1578. And Dorothea Stuart, she was born April 1528 and died April 1529. Born in 1489, Margaret was the second child and oldest daughter of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, whose marriage had cemented the alliance between the houses of Lancaster and York. Elizabeth did what every king hoped his wife would do. She provided Henry with an heir and a spare with the birth of Prince Arthur in 1486 and the birth of Prince Henry in 1491. Margaret was born in 1489 and Mary in 1496. Margaret and Mary were the only daughters of their seven children to survive into adulthood. Arthur died in 1502. On the 24th of January 1502, Scotland and England concluded the Treaty of Perpetual Peace, the first peace agreement between the two realms in over 170 years. A marriage treaty between Margaret and James IV of Scotland was concluded the same day and was viewed as a guarantee of the new peace. Margaret remained in England but was now known as the Queen of Scots. The marriage was completed by proxy on the 25th of January 1503. On the 11th of February 1503, on her 37th birthday, Margaret's mother, Elizabeth of York, died in childbirth. Her family were devastated by her death and mourned her deeply. Margaret was not yet 14 when she was sent to Scotland. The new queen was provided with a large wardrobe of clothes and jewels. She left Richmond Palace on the 27th of June after crossing the border at Berwick upon Tweed on the 1st of August 1503. Margaret was met by the Scottish court 
at Dalkeith Palace, James came to kiss her goodnight. He came again to console her on the 4th of August, after a stable fire had killed her favourite horses. The consummation of the marriage was delayed. This was not uncommon when young medieval brides were married, with the couple maintaining separate households, or just simply avoiding consummation until the bride was a more acceptable age. Not long after her marriage, Margaret was presented with the evidence of her new husband's previous liaisons. In the nursery at Stirling were no fewer than half a dozen of his illegitimate children. Margaret was not happy. The nursery was broken up and the children dispersed. James made generous provision for all of them. James appears to have done everything he could to please his young wife. The Christmas festivities for her first holiday season in her new country were particularly lavish and his New Year's gifts to her included gold sapphires and pearl studded crosses. Margaret's first pregnancy began in 1506, resulting in the birth of a son named James on the 21st of January 1507. Happiness soon turned to worry when shortly after the birth, both Margaret and baby James fell seriously ill. Her husband James made a pilgrimage to the shrine of St Ninian, making the 120 mile journey on foot to pray for their recovery. Margaret recovered, but unfortunately the baby died in February 1508. Margaret lost a daughter in July of that year, but was pregnant again by early 1509. In April 1509, Henry VII of England died and was succeeded by Margaret's younger brother, now Henry VIII. Margaret was now in theory heir to the throne of England, but Henry's swift marriage to Arthur's widow Catherine of Aragon probably meant that no one gave Margaret's position any thought. Despite the Treaty of Perpetual Peace that sought to manage low-level border warfare, hostilities continued and even increased. Margaret was powerless to keep the peace between her brother and husband. While Henry was on campaign in France, James invaded England. On the 9th of September, King James and a huge proportion of his nobles were slain at the Battle of Flodden. Catherine of Aragon sent James's blood-stained cloak to Henry in France. At 24 years old, Margaret was a pregnant widow with a 17-month-old son who was now the King of Scotland. Peace was finally concluded between England, Scotland and France in June 1514. A key element of the peace treaty was the agreement that Queen Margaret's younger sister, Mary, would, despite having been betrothed to Charles of Castile since 1507, now marry the elderly Louis XII of France. Originally, Margaret herself had been put forward as the candidate, but Louis wanted the younger and apparently better looking sister. Margaret, having begun well, then made what turned out to be a disastrous mistake. She decided to marry Archibald Douglas, 6th Earl of Angus. Margaret was presumably unaware that he was already engaged or possibly even married to Lady Jane Stewart. Angus had no loyalty to anyone or anything save the advancement of himself first and then the men of the Red Douglas clan second. 
Margaret's secret marriage horrified the nobles and the Scots Parliament. By the terms of her late husband's will, she had sacrificed her position as Regent of Scotland. In September, the Privy Council decided that she had also forfeited her right to the supervision of her sons. Margaret, however, was determined to hold on to her position, whereupon in defiance, she and her allies took the princes to Stirling Castle, where they barricaded themselves inside. She turned to Henry to protect her and her sons. Henry declined to send an army, but tried to persuade Margaret and Angus to take themselves and her sons to England, no doubt with a view to instituting a Regency Council composed of English sympathisers and the young king as effectively hostage for their good behaviour. Margaret and Angus refused Henry's offer of sanctuary. Angus ordered his wife to submit to the council for fear of being accused of treason, but Margaret refused to comply. By August, Margaret was again pregnant and could hold out no longer. In another dramatic scene, she brought James into the courtyard, holding the key of the fortress, which were probably almost as big as he was and let him hand them over. Margaret was forced to hand over her sons. Pregnant with Angus's child, Margaret escaped to England. She was taken to Northumberland. Here, not two weeks later, she gave birth to Lady Margaret Douglas. In December 1515, Margaret learned of the death of her youngest son, Alexander. It was also at this time that she began to get the measure of Angus, who, with an eye on his own welfare, returned to Scotland to make peace. When Henry VIII learned that Angus would not be accompanying his sister to London, he said, Don't like a Scot. In 1517, having spent a year in England, she returned north. Although Margaret and Angus were temporarily reconciled, it was not long before their relationship entered a phase of terminal decline. She discovered while she was in England, her husband had been living with Lady Jane Stewart, a former lover. This was bad enough. What was worse, they had been living on Margaret's money. In 1524, Margaret brought James, now 12 years old, from Stirling to Edinburgh. In August, Parliament declared the Regency at an end, and James was elevated to full kingly powers. In practice, he would continue to be governed by others, his mother above all. Her war with Angus descended into a murderous farce. When he arrived in Edinburgh with a large group of armed men claiming his right to attend Parliament, she ordered cannons to be fired on him and his men from both the castle and Holyrood House. Angus withdrew for the time being, but under pressure from various sources, the Queen finally admitted him to the Council of Regency in February 1525. It was all the leverage he needed. Taking custody of James, he refused to give him up, exercising full power on his behalf for a period of three years. James's experience during this time left him with abiding hatred of both the House of Douglas and the English. In 1527, Margaret was eventually granted an annulment of her marriage to Angus. The Pope granted it 
on the premise that Angus had been pre-contracted, he added a clause protecting the legitimacy of Margaret and Angus's daughter, Lady Margaret Douglas. In June 1528, James V finally freed himself from Angus who once more fled into exile and James began to rule in his own right. Margaret swiftly married Henry Stuart on the 3rd of March 1528. Henry was discovered to have been keeping a mistress in one of Margaret's castles. Margaret wished to divorce him but her son was reluctant to allow it. As so often in Margaret's life, tragedy and unhappiness were closely pursued by intrigue and farce. At one point she ran away towards the border, only to be intercepted and brought back to Edinburgh. Time and time again she wrote to her brother Henry with complaints about her poverty and appeals for money and protection. She wished for ease and comfort instead of being obliged to follow her son about like a poor gentle woman. In 1534, Margaret welcomed her son's new bride, Madeleine of France, into Scotland, but the 17-year-old bride died just a few months later. Margaret then welcomed Mary of Guise, James's second French bride, to Scotland in 1538. These two women, among the most formidable in Scottish history, established a good understanding. Mary made sure that her mother-in-law made regular appearances at court and it was reported to Henry VIII that the young queen was all papist and the old queen not much less. Margaret died after a stroke on the 18th of October 1541. As she thought she would recover, she did not trouble to make a will. She sent for her son James, but he did not come in time. Near the end, she wished that the friars who attended her would seek reconciliation of the king and the Earl of Angus. She hoped the king would give her possessions to her daughter, Lady Margaret Douglas. James ignored both the injunction of forgiveness and appropriated Margaret's goods for himself. Margaret lived a troubled life, in many ways her own worst enemy, as she sought to play one faction against another in a way that left few trusting her. Unhappy in her second and third marriages, deprived of her daughter and often on poor terms with her son, it is hard not to feel she was the author of many of her own misfortunes. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.